Shane Bardolf thought dark magic was the answer. I reckon Rookwood's played a hand in his disappearance. Bardo Beaumont should have returned by now. Had by dark wizards he was. Shane Bardolf thought dark magic was the answer. I reckon Rookwood's played a hand in his disappearance. Bardo Beaumont should have returned by now. Had by dark wizards he was. Shane Bardolf thought dark magic was the answer. A castle must have been quite stately in its time. Revelio. Rebellion. Levioso. Accio. Expelliant. for what you've done to helpless beasts. Revelio. This must be the cavern Mrs. Bottle mentioned. Still need to visit the cave to find Zorona's box of letters. Perhaps I'll find more hawk lumps while I'm there.
Better have a look around. See about the hawk clumps and the box of letters. Can bring her. That's all the hawk clumps for now. Mrs. Sprottle should be pleased. Revelio. Rebellio. Either I'll have to fight that troll, or avoid it altogether. Places! Confringo! Depulsa! Accio! Pendo!
Rebellion. I think that's everything. I should take this box of letters to Sorona. She'll be glad to have it back. Revelio. Depulsa. <laughs> Revelio. Rebellion. Perhaps I shall scout around Fellcroft for something to poach. Huh. Yes, but only muggles fall to such ailments. You really do worry too much. This place has seen better days.
Does it get any more cozy than Hogsmeade? <laughs> Hello, Sorona. I have good news. I was able to provide your friend Mrs. Sprottle with some hawk clumps for her Wigamel potion, and I found your box of letters. Oh, thank you. I knew you were the one to ask. I wondered about some of the letters in the box. Of course. It appears most of the letters were from fellow students. One of the letters mentions Quidditch practice. Did you play? I did. I was the Ravenclaw Seeker for three years. Oh, Merlin's beard. I adore Quidditch. Nothing like the feeling of catching the golden snitch when your team's down by 140 points. I'll never forgive Professor Black for cancelling it this year. I miss cheering for Ravenclaw. I saw a letter from someone named Mirabel. Is that Professor Garlic? It is. Still one of my dearest friends. I know she wouldn't mind you having seen that letter. She and I are of a similar mind, especially when it comes to young people. We believe experience to be an invaluable teacher. To borrow a phrase from Mirabel, it's a joy to see anyone blossom, but particularly one who doubted they ever would. I spotted a letter from you to Mrs. Sprottle. You two seem to have a lot of fun together. <laughs> we do. She taught me so much during my summers with her and Aiden. I shall be the first to admit that adolescents aren't always the easiest to understand. And not everyone was as kind to me as the Sprottles. But the depth of their kindness, and that of so many of my friends, got me through... Well, got me through some challenging times, to put it mildly. I'm glad I could be of help. Mrs. Sprottle sends her best. Don't know what I'd have done without her and Aiden. Thank you, again, for helping her. And for returning this box of letters. It's nice to reflect on good memories. Sometimes it seems all roads lead to Hogsmeade.
You can't imagine how inconvenient travel was before I invented flu powder. <laughs> Revelio. Hello, Mr. Moon. Oh, greetings! Uh, any luck removing some more of those demiguy statues? I actually have some moons for you. Oh, my mind feels lighter already, knowing those statues are gone. I did promise to show you how to improve casting Alahamora once you'd brought me enough moons. Oh, with that knowledge, you'll be able to break open even stronger locks. Mm. However, we don't yet know who's behind these statues. <laughs> Still plenty of the foul things lying in wait to torture me. Oh... If you bring me more moons, I'll show you how to cast the most powerful form of Alohomora known to wizard kind. <sighs> At least known to me. Keep looking for those moons, hmm? You'll save my sanity and we may get to the bottom of whoever's behind all... Deke. Ah, Deke is so happy to see you. And Deke noticed this bag in the room the other day. You must need it to help with your schoolwork. Deke has seen one of these before. Deke calls it a knapsack. Perfect for gathering and transporting beasts. Pleasant little breed. I have been thinking about something Professor Howen said in Beasts class, that I should study as many beasts as I can on my own time. She also mentioned that poachers have been active in the area. So, perhaps the beasts will be safer with us than out on their own. Precisely what Deke was thinking. You see, the room knew exactly what you needed. And luckily, Deke can show you how to best use the knapsack and where. Come along, then. Our first stop will be beyond the castle grounds. We can leave now, or you can come and find Deke when you're ready to go.
Revelio. Rebellion. Alohomora. Hello, Hamora. Rebellion. How nice to see you, my young friend. Alohomora. Rebellion. Hello, Hamora.
Revelio. Another Rebellion. Revelio. Rebellion. Alohomora. I now there, me guys. Revelio. Stepping. Revelio. I've always said that travel broadens the mind. Alohomora. Revelio.
Alohomora. Revelio. Alohomora. Revelio. Let me also. Revelio. Alohomora. Mine now, Demi guys. Revelio. Alohomora. Revelio. Alohomora. Revelio. How inconvenient travel was before I invented. Could it be a Merlin trial? Lumos. Revelio. Abandoned long ago, no doubt.
take your time looking about. Plenty of wonderful books to stoke a curious mind like yours. A pleasure doing business with you. Let me know if there's anything else I can do to help. Revelio. Hamora. Revelio. Revelio. Hello, Hamora. Revelio. Rebellion.
Alohomora. Revelio. Meet, here I come. Accio! Revelio! Revelio. Alohomora. Revelio. 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 Alohomora. Revelio. Mine now, then. Alohomora. Revelio. Alohomora. Revelio. Accio. 
Revelio. Alohomora. Revelio. Revelio. <laughs> Alohomora. Revelio. Come on in, come on in. Don't be shy. You can stop by any time. Let me guess. You're after something fresh. Now, you let me know if there's anything else I can help you with. You have a good head for business, haven't you? No one can say I don't keep a stack shelf. Let me guess, you're after something fresh. No one can say I don't keep a stacked shelf. <laughs> Rebellion.
Hello, Hamora. Rebellion. Handy resource indeed, your field guide. Revelio. Please be included. Uh. Alohomora. Rebellion. Hello, Hamora. Revelio. Hello, nice to meet you. Oh, hello. Uh, the name is Porrick Haggerty, and this is my shop. W what may I help you with? I'd like to ask you about your shop, if you don't mind. Certainly, that'd be fine. What would you like to know? What do you have for sale? What can I help you with today? It's, uh, good luck for me you stopped by today. Thank you for your patronage. Glad you were able to stop Rebellion. by. Rebellion.
Looks rather dark in there. Never stopped me before. Ranrock has fooled you all to your demise. Revelio. I know that. Does it get any more cozy than Hogsmeade? Revelio. <laughs> Accio. Levioso. On in. Now, where, where was I? Right. Oh, yes. <laughs> now, you let me know if there's anything else I can help you with. No one can say I don't keep a stack shelf. On in. Plenty to look at here. Nothing like finding just the right thing, is there? Nothing like finding just the right thing, is there? Let me know if there's anything else I can do to help. Historically speaking, there's nothing.
I've always said that travel broadens the mind. What do you have in store for me this time? Revelio. Accio. Expelliarmus. Levioso. Repulso. Defendo. Accio. Glacier. Confirm it. Revelio. Confringo. Confringo. Roland himself will be proud. Revelio. Your blood on Ranrock's hands. Revelio. What do we have here? Alohomora. Rebellion. Mine now, damn you guys. Revelio. You can't imagine that intruder. Hello, Hamora. Revelio. You ought to come back on pudding.
Hello, nice to meet you. Welcome, I am Bernard Indiaye, and this is my shop. What do you have for sale? What are we in the market for today? A pleasure doing business with you. Have I mentioned Rebellion. you're welcome to stop by any time? Rebellio. Accio. Revelio. Someone there. Accio. I won't let you. You made it. Enjoying the view? Keeping an eye on things. Feldcroft isn't what it used to be. No one has felt safe here since Ranrock's loyalists took a peculiar interest in that castle over there. Rookwood Castle. My uncle Solomon is a former Aura and refuses to look into it, even after Anne was cursed by one of them. Possibly with a wand, no less. I heard a goblin refer to wizard kind as wand carriers. A goblin's forbidden from carrying wands. Precisely. That's why I'm on the hunt for answers. If I'm to cure her, I need to understand what happened to her. Anne was always the most mischievous of the three of us. Which is saying something, knowing me and Ominous. I'm hoping a surprise visit from me and a new friend from Hogwarts will help lift her spirits. Bring back the Anne I used to know. Come on. I'll take you to my uncle's. This way. Feldcroft used to be a lot livelier. Off and With Ranrock's lot wandering about all the time, everyone stays out of sight. Revelio. Here we are. My sister should be just inside. Aha! Sebastian, where did you... Is that... What I think it is. We've been over this, boy. Hey. Shrivel figs cannot reverse a curse. Nothing can. The sooner you accept that reality, the better. But we haven't tried everything. There is no cure! When will you accept that? Never. I can never accept it. <laughs> now look what you've done. <laughs> I'm sorry. Please. I'm sorry you had to see that. Revelio! If you don't mind, I just need a moment alone. Poor Sebastian. Not the visit he'd hoped for. I'm sorry about earlier. Those bouts of pain are difficult to bear.
Are you all right, Anne? I, I didn't mean to intrude. You didn't, truly. <sighs> and I'm all right. The pain from this curse comes in bouts, and often suddenly, it's not anyone's fault. It's nice to meet you, by the way. You must be the new fifth year Sebastian told me about. I am. Sebastian and I met during a rather lively duel in defense against the dark arts. Oh dear, Professor Hecate. She's a powerful witch. And she knows how to keep students like my brother, and me, in line. I do miss Hogwarts. But I wouldn't mind being in Feldcroft, really, if it wasn't so dreary now. Between the goblins at the castle and my uncle fighting with Sebastian whenever he's home, it's not the cosy retreat it once was. Sebastian mentioned something about your uncle being an ex-Aura, but refusing to go after Ranrock's loyalists. I must say, I wasn't prepared for him to be as angry as he was. Uncle Solomon is frustrated by what happened to me and by Sebastian for thinking he can fix it. They both mean well, I know they do, but my uncle is right. This curse cannot be undone. I can feel it. Sebastian cannot take away my pain. Perhaps you can help him to understand that. I'll do my best. I can promise to speak with him about it. Thank you. His search for a cure is futile, I'm afraid. I'm getting tired. I should probably rest. Thank you for stopping by. I wish you well. Revelion. That boy will fray my last nerve. Excuse me, Mr. Sallow. Oh, yes, Sebastian's friend. I apologize on behalf of my nephew. He doesn't know when to stop. I was about to check on Anne. Did I see you come from the house? How is she? She's all right. She said she was going to rest. Nothing can be done for her. I understand you've tried everyone from Nurse Blaney to St. Mungo's to no avail. We have. My nephew thinks he knows better than the healers. Perhaps the healers don't know everything, sir. Sebastian is single-mindedly focused on finding a way to help his sister. If there is a cure, he will find it. Your faith in Sebastian is misplaced. Some sort of dark magic cursed Anne, and the goblins aren't likely to explain themselves any time soon. Giving her hope is cruel. The only thing to do now is keep Anne comfortable and stay out of the Loyalists' way. I understand what you're saying, sir. Good. I know what's best for Anne and Sebastian. They are my stubborn brother's children. Especially Sebastian. If you really want to be of help, you'll make sure Sebastian does what he should do, not what he wants to do. He's no idea the harm he could do if he doesn't stop. I hope you'll remember what I've said. Good day. I want to see how Sebastian's faring. Why will he not listen to me? She's my sister. How are you doing, Sebastian? You got a first-hand glance at what I'm dealing with. I apologize for my uncle. I know he's angry, but he's only trying to do what he thinks is best for Anne. He's always angry. He's been angry since my parents died. After Anne was hurt, he only grew worse. It's as though he blames me somehow, always calling me my father's son, as if that's an insult. I'm the one trying to help her. He's simply given up. Both Anne and your uncle seem genuinely convinced that nothing more can be done for her. I refuse to believe that. Anne's pain is more than physical. It has changed her entirely. I miss my sister. And I'm going to get her back. Come with me. I need to show you where it happened. Ranrock's loyalists are capable of so much more than people realize. They should not be underestimated. All the debris you'll see is from whatever's going on at that abandoned estate. They've been digging for something. Huh. 
Up there, on that plateau, is where they cursed Anne. This way. How much longer are we expected to dig through this rock? Revelio. And Rock knows what he's doing. It's an honor to be a part of it. Levioso. Rather unwise coming back this way. Levioso. Revelio. What am I doing here? This one's right. No. No. I won't rest. Levioso. You've made your last mistake. I'll cut you from shoes to shadow. Over here, Akio. Human to worry Bits more than I bargained for. I tried to warn you. Those loyalists deserved what they got. Couldn't agree more. This is where it happened. We smelled smoke in the middle of the night. When we looked outside, flames were shooting from the estate. Before my uncle and I could stop her, Anne rushed out, racing towards the fire, worried someone would be hurt. She came face to face with a horde of goblins, frantically trying to stamp out the flames. Suddenly, an icy voice drifted out from somewhere in the smoke. Children should be seen and not heard. A blinding blast followed. They didn't even give her a chance to run. It seems an awfully violent response to a child wandering by. What were they trying to hide? My thoughts exactly. It may be grasping at billywigs, but I keep thinking that there might be something here that could lead me to whoever cursed Anne. Might be the only way to learn what type of magic harmed her, which could help me find a cure. Perhaps you're right. The loyalists are everywhere, but they do seem to be spending a lot of time here, and it's likely they're hiding something. And at Rookwood Castle. Shall we have a look around? Ravelli seem to have set up camp here for a specific reason. They have stations for everything. I've heard that goblin dig sites like these are popping up everywhere. Hmm. It's a wonder the Ministry isn't doing more. Confringo! 
Whose home was this? A bit abandoned long since I've Rebellion. lived here. Rumor was a Hogwarts professor lived here once, centuries ago. But that's all I ever heard. Closer look at the house itself. Sebastian, over here. Do you think that this was damaged by the fire the night that Anne was cursed? Could be. But it looks to me as though this was in Revelio. <laughs> Sebastian, this house did belong to a Hogwarts professor hundreds of years ago. Who? What do you- I found a pensive that day in the restricted section with a memory that showed this house. There was a little girl and a drought. The keepers have shown me other memories as well. The girl became a Hogwarts professor. Her name was Isadora Morganark. She was one of the keepers. The keepers? Like in Quidditch? And you found a pensive in the library? I'm not following you. I realize it's a lot to take in. I'm not even sure I understand it all yet. And no, not like Quidditch. They call themselves keepers because they're protecting some type of knowledge. It has to do with the vault at Gringotts. Let me see if I've got this straight. You have Ranrock and Rookwood after you because of something you found at Gringotts where you ended up via a port key. And now you've been witnessing memories left by keepers. Oh, and this house belonged to a Hogwarts professor who was one of these non-Quidditch keepers hundreds of years ago. If I didn't know you, I think you were pulling my leg. It is all a bit much, isn't it, when you put it like that? The point is, we both have good reason to search this house. You for answers about what happened to Anne, and me for answers about the keepers. Revelio, look at this. Someone piled this here for a reason. Is it blocking something? Only one way to find out. Revelio. Why bother blocking a stairwell? There might be something here worth a closer look. They've left all of this simply strewn about. Lumos. Tells me they're after something bigger. Seems these journal entries are from Isadora's... A journal entry of Isadora's. I should hold on to this. Lumos. Lumos. You're not going to believe this. I can see the Undercroft. What? A daydream? Because that happens to me too. I know it sounds strange, but... Honestly, I nothing you say sounds strange to me anymore. Fair enough. I can see the Undercroft through this stone wall as though it's a window. This has happened before. I'm listening. I have a rare ability to see whispers of ancient magic. I don't know what I was expecting you to say, but it wasn't that. <laughs> I knew you weren't telling me everything. Ancient magic. What does that even mean? I'm not entirely sure but the Keepers have said that it's a powerful magic that should only be wielded by a select few. And you can wield it? I don't know, but Fig and I think that Ranrock has somehow found a way to harness that magic's power. Are you telling me that goblins may be wielding some sort of wizard magic? That's what we're trying to find out. What I do know is that my ability allows me to travel through these windows, I see. Wait. We can get straight to the Undercroft from here. <laughs> Ominous will be flawed. We can, but perhaps best not to tell anyone else about this for now, even Ominous. Understood. Well then, invisible secret ancient magic passageway, here we come. I'm tempted to hold my Rebellion. breath. Why would the door lead us here? 
Sebastian, look. Why hide a triptych here? Seems as if something's missing. Lumos, a note. Let's have a look. Anything helpful in the note? A rune symbol. I've seen similar symbols used by the keepers. I've been thinking. A keeper lived in that house centuries ago, and Ranrock and his lot have been searching there. You said that goblins may be wielding some form of this ancient magic. Do you think Anne was cursed by ancient magic? I can't be sure, of course, but I don't think so. I didn't see any traces of it around your sister. Hmm. Very well. But that doesn't mean it's not ancient magic. There's still so much we don't know about it. True. Perhaps this triptych will lead us to answers. Then we'll have to unravel what this all means. But now I need to see Ominous. Don't worry, I won't tell him anything. Did I mention that, apparently, Salazar Slytherin had a secret scriptorium here, in Hogwarts? You did not. Sounds worth looking into. Any idea where in the castle? No idea. Ominous just learned of it. I'll let you know what I find out. I had no idea our visit to Sian would unfold into all of this. My head's an utter mess. But I'm glad you told me everything you did. I'll be in touch. Till then. Revelio. I remind you that you are studying at Hogwarts and not the three broomsticks? You'll never become an aura at this rate. So get your head out of your butterbeer and into a blasted wizarding book, for Merlin's sake.
I'm ready to learn how to use the knapsack. Perfect! Deke loves an outing. A nasty poacher. Deke hated working for him. He did horrible things to beautiful beasts. Oh. It was during those days that Deke first saw a knapsack. Uh, it'll be nice to see one used for good. We have arrived. Deke enjoys coming here to watch the beasts, especially the puffle of puffskeens nearby. It will be nice to keep them safe. All you will need to do is get close, direct the open knapsack toward the puffskeen, and in it'll go. All right. You got one. Revelio. Oh, no, you don't. Believe this. I managed to rescue a puffskeen. You can rescue as many as the knapsack will hold. Poachers capture puffskeens, and, well, Deke isn't sure what they do with them. Deke is certain they will be safer with you. Now, not all beasts will be as simple to rescue as a puffskeen. Deke suggests you next find a beast that can fly. A jobbernol, perhaps. All right. Where would I find one? Deke knows of some to the west, nesting in a large tree overlooking Hogwarts. But we must be careful. Deke has seen poachers in the area recently. Deke will meet you there whenever you're ready. Rebellion. Who 
Who lived here, I wonder? Hello, Deke. Shall we continue? Oh, good. Deke was worried about you, what with all the poachers in the area. Perhaps we should work quickly. The Jobanols are just here, in this large tree. If it's helpful, Deke has seen Levioso used to slow flying beasts. Easier to get in close and use the knapsack. Would you mind talking a bit more about what it was like working for your former master? Deke's master was not kind to beasts, or to Deke. He saw beasts only as a source of income, to be used for potion ingredients and labor, and... Deke will not say more. But Deke is grateful to be at Hogwarts, where he can help care for beasts and make amends for the things his master made him do. Do you have any advice on how I can rescue more elusive beasts? Levioso is not only helpful when rescuing flying beasts, it, it can also help rescue beasts that are generally hard to catch. Try using that spell the next time you encounter a small or otherwise elusive beast. What if I can't find any beasts in their usual habitat? Beasts won't stray too far from their homes. Look nearby or simply wait a moment and they should return. I shall go and rescue a job and all. Good luck. Deke will be waiting. Huh. Revelio. I rescued a Jobanol. Deke hopes your Jobanol finds the knapsack nice and cosy. Poachers want them for their feathers and are not kind when they gather them. Are there any other beasts nearby? Just one that Deke knows of, a herd of moon calves. They live in a clearing of trees up this footpath. Deke will see you there. Hello, Deke. Is this the clearing you mentioned? It is. Moon calves gather near the large tree with the spiral pattern in front, but only under the light of the moon. So, unfortunately, unless you have a way to hasten time, you might sometimes have to wait until nightfall to see them. How did you end up at Hogwarts after working for your former master? Deke's prior master had no family, so when he died, all of his house elves were relocated by the Ministry. Deke was the most fortunate one as Deke was sent to Hogwarts. Deke's friends were not as fortunate. I shall go and find a moon calf then. Deke will be waiting for your return.
can bring her. See you, my young friend. Revelio. Do cooperate, won't you? Let me also. It's a bit trickier than the others, but I have a moon calf now. Another beast, safe and sound. Shame we didn't see the moon calves dancing. It's a marvelous sight. Deke supposes you're finished here. You'll be able to rescue many more beasts, but for now, let's bring the ones you've gathered back to the room. All right. Deke will meet you back in the room whenever you're ready.
It was a bit trickier than the others, but I have a moon calf now. Another beast, safe and sound. Shame we didn't see. There you are. Now, we need to show the beast you rescued their new home. But, um, not enough room to let them out here. Imagine all those beasts running amok. That wouldn't do at all. Perhaps if you focus on what your beasts need, the room will provide. Hmm, what exactly did you think of? Heavens! You've done it! But what is it? Deke isn't sure. Only one way to find out. Meet you inside when you're ready. Look at this! It's amazing! Where are we, Deke? It seems to be a place for your beasts to live, a vivarium of some sort. Oh, your beasts will be quite comfortable here. They'll live healthy, safe lives. Perhaps you want to release them, let them see their new home. Oh dear, Deke thinks perhaps you didn't know Deke was near. Oh. <laughs> oh! Deke thinks the vivarium will be a fitting new home for your beasts. Indeed. I only hope we'll have enough space for all of them. Deke hopes so, too. But if you do run out of room, Madam Peck at Brood and Peck in Hogsmeade will help to find safe homes for them. Any beasts that the room can't hold? Yes, she's well known for helping to care for beasts in need, and she'll give you a fair price for them. Speaking of care, beasts that are well-fed and groomed will provide you with valuable magical materials, such as puffskin hair, for example. If you gather some magical materials from your beasts, Deke can show you how to use them. Very well. I shall let you know when I have some. Rebellion. Oh dear, Deke thinks perhaps you didn't know Deke was near. Yeah. 
collected some magical materials, Deke. Now Deke can show you how to use them. First, you'll need to use this spellcraft to conjure an enchanted loom. An enchanted loom? Exactly. It will allow you to use your magical materials to weave magic into the very threads of your clothing, making your clothing more useful in a variety of ways. Why don't you try it? Deke thinks you'll be impressed with what the loom can do. I'll go and experiment with the loom now. Came out nicely. I should show Deke. I use the enchanted loom, Deke. Wonderful. Will I be able to weave even more powerful magic into my clothing with the loom? You will, by rescuing even more powerful beasts. For now, however, Deke suggests you explore the vivarium and get to know the beasts you've already rescued. Can I use the loom to enhance any item of clothing? The loom will only enhance clothing of a certain quality. Deke suspects you'll find more valuable clothing as you explore. Deke also knows that some of the shops in Hogsmeade can provide you with a variety of clothing for you to enhance. Thank you for your help, Deke. of Falbottom Castle. After dark, do not tell anyone.
Revelio.
What are you up to now? Anything to do with the Dark Heart should be avoided. It's too risky. Anything to do with Salazar Slytherin is worth the risk. I can't agree. And I'll not say a word more. I'm sorry. I won't give up. What were you and Ominous speaking about? He's being ridiculous. Apparently Salazar Slytherin had a secret scriptorium here in Hogwarts. Ominous swears it was used for the Dark Arts. So he wants nothing to do with it. I reminded him that Anne needs a cure. This scriptorium could hold the answers we need. The dark arts do pique my interest. There's more to dark magic than people realize. The Gaunts know this. Better than most. Perhaps I've spoken out of turn. Ominous's family history is personal to him. I understand. You needn't tell me if you don't want to. If I were you, I'd be begging for more details. It's not that I'm not interested. And you can certainly trust me if you want to tell me anything. Ominous learned dark magic from his parents. Are you familiar with the Cruciatus Curse? Crucio, correct? The Cruciatus Curse, also known as the Torture Curse, inflicts excruciating pain on the victim. Apparently, his parents and older siblings had no qualms about casting it on muggles for sport. Ominous described the sound of the victim's cries as horrific, so the first time he was asked to cast it himself as a child, he couldn't bring himself to do it. As punishment, his family cast it on him. The anguish was so bad that when asked to cast it again, he relented. I have repeatedly assured Ominous that he did what he had to, but he still hasn't forgiven himself. How horrible. Poor Ominous. He was only a child. He shouldn't blame himself. After that incident, the rift between Ominous and his family only grew. That is until I came along. Every moment he isn't at Hogwarts, he's with us in Feldcroft. Ominous trusts me, and more often than not, he winds up listening to me. 
I'll remind him of that when I follow up about the scriptorium. Watch for my owl. I'll have news soon enough. I'll make Ominous understand. He'll change his mind. It's tormenting Professor Black. <laughs> Expelliarmus. Levioso. Accio. Incendio. Revelio. Lumos. Revelio. Protego. Lumos. Revelio. Alohomora. What do we have here? A demigod. Mine now, demigod. Revelio. Lumos. Revelio. Lumos. Revelio. Revelio. You can't imagine how inconvenient travel was before I invented flu powder. And your reading is the dragon. That's exciting, I suppose. Perhaps you're due for an adventure. Ladies, 
Professor Shaw. Astronomy is not divination. You won't find the mysteries of the cosmos charted out on your palms or at the bottom of your teacups. Alas, the heavens remain hazy to the starry-eyed. Now, if you were to devote yourselves to persistent and painstaking observation, you just might catch a glimpse. With that in mind, please take your telescopes. Tonight we will be on the observation deck. Still don't have your own? You can't be the new student forever, you know. You can share with Mr. Takar. Here, I can adjust that for no, you. No, no. Bring it into focus on your own. Now, I expect all of you to put in your stargazing hours outside of class. Is that clear? But, Professor... It's freezing out. Mere cold didn't stop the great stargazers of the past. Look only to the astronomy tables they erected throughout the highlands from which they gazed millennia ago on the very selfsame stars above us. Is that clear? <sighs> Dismissed. Hello. I don't believe we've met officially. I'm Amit. I'm something of an astronomy buff. Hello, Amit. It's nice to meet you. Did I hear Professor Shaw say that you don't have your own telescope? I have a spare one you could borrow for the rest of term. That's very kind of you, Amit. Are you sure you won't need it? I'm certain. It's my old one. I finally got my hands on the new Celestia Contemplor. You've heard of it, I assume? I mean, of course you have. It's only the pinnacle of all personal stargazing implements. But my old model's not too shabby either. Goblin cut glass, first-rate optical enchantments. Hate to think such a fine instrument is just collecting dust. Well, I... I thank you, Amit. Think nothing of it. Anyway, the telescope's in the storage room right underneath us. You can't miss it. I have some, uh... Reading to finish on the lower deck. Come find me there afterwards and bring the telescope. There's something I want to talk to you about. I tried to put off my stargazing as long as I could. <laughs> All of good that did. How am I supposed to find Sirius when my hands are too cold to use a telescope? It's Rebellio! Professor Shah is just about as cold and distant as the bloody stars she wants us to chart. <sighs> Not how I wanted to spend my evening. Not sure what you can learn from these astronomy tables that you can't learn from a couple of people. Our meat thinks he knows everything. He even told me he can speak gobbledygook. I had heard about these odd stone tables out in the Highland. Perhaps the constellations are beautiful. I'm not sure they're worth dying of a cold for, but they are beautiful. I'm trying to put off my stargazing as long as I could. Oh, good, that this was his old telescope. <laughs> Looks practically brand new. Can bring up! Pristine night for stargazing. The perfect night for... I have the telescope. It's nicer than I'd expected. I would not offer a prospective stargazer a third-rate lunoscope. <laughs> but there is, um, something else. Yes, what is it? You remember those astronomy tables Shaw was going on about? It just so happens I've been reading up on them a little myself. And it seems there may be one right here at Hogwarts. I believe we could use it to find hidden constellations. And you need someone to help find it. I do. Are you in? 
No one from the Gobstones Club will go with me. Said they'd rather get spit at by a stone than... Well, they are cowards. Let us get moving while the stars are still out. I'll show you how to use that telescope once we get there. I promise. No need to convince me. Let's get going. Brilliant. You won't regret it. Shall we? The table is on a castle wall ahead. Look for a stone platform, something that doesn't quite belong. We'll know it when we see it. Onwards we go. Some say the locations of the tables were originally marked by centaurs for ritual stargazing. <sighs> it is nice having a fellow stargazer to explore with. Happy to be here. It is good to leave the glass from now and then. It's not that creepy out here at night, is it? The Gobstones Club are cowards. Here I am, charging ahead. Why don't you lead the way? If you're sure. Hmm. A little foreboding. Revelio. A few cobwebs and some dust. Nothing to be concerned. Oh, of course. It's just not as... Tidy, as I expected. Rebellio. More cobwebs. You don't think any spiders might be lurking Incendio. about? Oh no. Not this close to school, I mean. Look, there's the table. I think you should do the honors. Go on, try it out. The constellation should appear near the center of your view. As soon as you've lined up the telescope, we will be able to fill out our star chart. I was right about the tables. They really are gateways to the far stars, just as the book said. And your contribution was invaluable. Rest assured, you shall be credited in my memoirs one day. Thank you, Amit. I look forward to reading them. And I look forward to writing them. <laughs> this is only the beginning. You will find more tables like this one throughout the grounds and forest, all beckoning to be discovered by a worthy astronomer. And if I have ever seen one, it's you. Oh, and about my old telescope, don't bother returning it. You should keep it. That's quite generous. Thank you. You are welcome. It has goblin-cut glass and a gobbledygook inscription. I'm practically fluent in gobbledygook, you know. It's all in the throat, really, gobbledygook, you know, and, and how you pronounce your R's. Um, anyway, glad our adventure was a success. I will see you soon. Revelio. Oh, never do get tired of seeing the astronomy tower at night. What a view. Incredible.
I've always said that travel oh, seems a bit of Beaumont should have returned by now. Groundrock's loyalists are a menace. What can be done? I couldn't help but overhear. Did you mention Ranrock's loyalists? I did. <sighs> Never imagined they'd act this deadly. I'm Claire Beaumont, by the way. Nice to meet you. Ranrock and his followers have set up camp here. No regard for our beloved Hamlet or our livelihoods. Ruthless. My brother Bardolf dared to stand up to them and ended up in St Mungo's. I'm simply at my wit's end. How did your brother Bardolf end up in St. Mungo's? <sighs> Bardolf had spent the entire day hand-picking herbs and roots for us. When a group of Ranrock's lot appeared and demanded the harvest for themselves, Bardolf refused. In their anger, they hurled him against the rock and robbed him. <sighs> the moment he left St. Mungo's, he vowed revenge. <sighs> I worry he may be dabbling in magic that he will one day regret. You said Ranrock's loyalists have set up camp here. Where, precisely? To the south, across the river. Last I heard, there were several loyalists in each camp. I won't go near them. Why don't you simply leave the area for now? Upper Hogsfield is my home. Baldolf and I grew up here. No, we are standing firm. Once my brother returns, then we shall decide what to do next. He's gone to seek Victor Rookwood's advice. I didn't approve of that idea, but perhaps in the end it will help. I'm unfortunately quite familiar with Ranrock's loyalists. Perhaps I can do something. <sighs> Much as I would love to be rid of them, I wouldn't want you to risk injury, or worse. Please be cautious. We should not... Fear. This is our home. It seems as though things are getting worse. Best be on my guard. Rebellion. You will regret coming here. Ah. One less shoe to one. It's a new Incendium. 
your ways. Revelio. One camp down, one more to go. Revelio. I can be used for better things than this so called patrol. Revelio. Yeah. Yeah. 
and send you. Oh. Revelio. Both camps cleared. Madam Beaumont will be glad to hear that. Not sure how I'd fare in a little place like this. I do miss the bustle of business. Hello, Madame Beaumont. Good news. I was able to clear out Ranrock's camps. You cleared them out? How? It was harrowing, and they dug in their heels, but I managed. When my brother returns, this news will mean the world to him. You saved our hamlet, my young friend. This will not be forgotten. I fear for other hamlets, truly. Ranrock and his lot are unlike any goblins I've ever seen. What do you have for sale? What are you looking for exactly? Thank you. Sincerely. Marvellous. I could always use more of these. Thank you for passing through. Magic was the answer. Excuse me, did you say something about Bardolf Beaumont? Oh, hello again. How nice to see you. And yes, I did. I was just worrying about Claire Beaumont's brother Bardolf. Only he's gone missing. Rumour is he was seen in the forest practising dark magic. Saw him myself near some ruins with Rookwood's lot I did. I fear he got himself into trouble with the Ashwinders. Especially if he made them a promise he couldn't keep. Shame, really. With Ranrock's camps cleared out, I have a feeling he'd have given up on dark magic altogether. Do you think Bardolf may have simply run off? No. Bardolf's run that shop with Claire his entire life. He'd not give it up for anything. He swore he'd be back in a fortnight. My instincts are that he's been held captive, or worse. Why would Bardolf want to get involved with the Ashwinders? Oh, he had a terrible run-in with Ranrock's loyalists. Changed him. He vowed never to feel powerless again. I think he sought the Ashwinders out to learn their secrets. Victor Rockwood, at least, seems somehow immune to Ranrock's loyalists. I can certainly look out for him. Any. Claire will be at her shop if you'd like to speak with her. Let me also. 
You've one less follower, Ranrock. Revelio. Revelio. This looks intriguing. Rebellion. This mentions in theory, and something about it being Bardolf's turn next. Who lives here? Oh, my sins. Oh, I do hope my brother is all right. Madame Beaumont, I believe I have some news of your brother. Adolf? What do you know of my brother?
I regret to say that Bardolf had been turned into an Inferius, and I had to kill him. What? But, but how could you possibly think that an Inferius was my brother Bardolf? That's absurd. He was wearing a woolen jumper, hand knitted. <gasps> no, no, this can't be. I'm truly sorry. I wish it had been better news. I wish you well, Madame Beaumont. <laughs> what more could I have done? Oh, Bardolf! What are you looking for exactly? Bardolf, my dear, dear brother. Oh, it's you? The good you've done on behalf of the Arthur Hogsfield resident.